Hello and welcome, you future finance legends. This is Legend Finance, the channel where we all grow wealth together. Do you dream of extra income that doesn't take up all your time? We've got the answer. Today, we'll explore selling puts, an interesting strategy from the world of options trading. Think of it like providing an insurance policy for stocks. You get paid whether you're chilling, working, or even sleeping. Ready to find out more? Tap that subscribe button and join us on this journey of transforming everyday people into finance legends. Together, let's make Wall Street feel like Main Street. Income streams, here we come. Discussion. When selling put options, choosing the right stock is crucial. A put option is an agreement in which the buyer speculates that the stock's price will fall. If it does drop to the strike price as the seller, you'll acquire those shares. This process is essentially a bet on the stock's price movement. So pick a stock you're interested in and wouldn't mind owning. If the price drops, you could find yourself with 100 shares. Remember, successful put option selling all starts with smart stock selection. Imagine you're thinking about selling put options to bring in some extra income. Now it's super important that you start with a stock that you really like and know a lot about. Why? Well, if the stock's price takes a tumble, you'll be snapping up shares, and you want those to be shares you're happy to own. Let's say you're looking at a stock like NEO. Over the past month, NEO has dipped as low as around $8.18. Seeing that, you might think about selling puts at $9 or even $8.5. It's a bit like placing a bet, hoping the stock's price won't fall. But if it does, you're ready to buy the shares. But hey, this is just an example. Making financial decisions can be a bit of a maze and it's super important to get some advice from a pro. Always reach out to a financial advisor or someone who knows the ropes before you make any big moves in finance. They can help you weigh the pros and cons and make the best decision for you. Let's delve into a scenario with our NEO example. Suppose we're choosing expiration dates either a week or a month from now. There's certainly a difference, but think about it. Making a thousand bucks in a week is pretty comparable to banking 4,000 in a month. You may consider, aren't month-long trades riskier given more can happen? A valid point, but not necessarily a rule. Now, imagine this. We've got an option that expires in eight days and we decide to sell an $8 put. Picture us right at this moment, putting that option on the market. It's a glimpse into the myriad of possibilities that trading can offer. These are, of course, just scenarios. In the dynamic world of trading, realities can be quite different. And remember, if you're ever in doubt, it's never a bad idea to turn to the experts for guidance. Imagine this scenario. If we decide to sell an $8.5 put, we're looking at pocketing around $11. That's a return of just over 1%, which is pretty neat. Now let's shake things up a bit and extend our horizons. Picture us looking at options that expire in 29 days. We stick with our decision to sell the $8.5 put option, but this time, the reward is about four times more. Well, a tad less than four times because strictly speaking, four times 11 would be 44, but you can see the point. It makes quite a difference. Let's consider this. In theory, weekly trading might be slightly more profitable, but it does demand more effort. The difference is minor, really. Whether we're scooping up $11 about four times or 40, the return is roughly the same. Keep in mind, though, that if the stock price rises, we won't be able to sell the $8.5 put option for the same price anymore. The price will drop, but the risk-reward balance remains similar. After all, they're both attached to the same strike price and premium. One thing we definitely want to steer clear of is choosing a poor-performing stock or an in-the-money option since they can be pitfalls on this trading journey. Imagine we have the choice to sell an in-the-money option, perhaps at $9.5 or $9. However, we prefer to venture out of the way. Why do we learn this way? It's generally safer and more consistent to sell an out-of-the-money option when we consider the current stock price. Now picture this scenario. The stock is priced at $9 and we're selling an $8 put option. The chances of NEO's price falling to $8 are fairly slim, but let's say it happens. It's not a major setback because we're dealing with a top-notch company like NEO. We'd acquire it at a great price. The key here is for us to manage this position wisely together. Here's how we can do it. Let's analyze the moving average of Apple, seeing where it's been trading for the last 30 days. We'll tweak the precedent of 50, which is the default on Yahoo Finance, down to 30. Suddenly, we've got this line that reveals the average price Apple has been trading at for the past 30 days. If you look closely, Apple is currently trading below this 30-day moving average. 
Next up, we activate the Bollinger Band. These bands provide us with a simple way to gauge where Apple might trade in terms of its highs and lows. It's all about the standard deviation, which basically predicts the likely trading range of Apple based on this indicator. Once we've employed this tool, we'll notice that Apple is near the low end of the Bollinger Band. We also pay attention to the Relative Strength Index RSI. Looking at it right now, it's at 40.6. This tells us that Apple is in the middle of its trading range. It's neither oversold nor overbought. These are valuable insights for us. Let's embark on a journey to observe Apple's stock movements. We might notice the stock settling around the 119 level at certain points, even reaching as high as 120 at others. This suggests robust support for Apple at the 120 level. Then, let's visualize ourselves on a trading platform similar to Robinhood. Picture us exploring trade Apple options. For our hypothetical scenario, let's say Apple's share price is $128. The goal of our example is to sell a put option. We'll explore the process of how this might be done and the level we might consider for such an action. It's an exciting journey. Let's imagine we're aiming to capture a reasonable return with less frequent trading. Suppose we're considering a more long-term approach instead of dealing with the weekly hustle. Take an example of a hypothetical stock, say Orange Corp, that's less volatile, so its weekly options wouldn't give us as much premium as a monthly option. So let's hypothetically plan a month ahead, targeting the option chain for August 18th. This chain provides vital details like the strike price, break-even point, and potential for profit. Now assume the 130 level seems secure with significant support. Though the $200 premium for 100 shares seems tempting, offering just over 1.5% return in a month, we'd be ambitious to earn more, right? So weighing all this, the 130 level feels like a comfortable, low-risk spot for us. Let's explore a different strike, say the 132.5 level for our hypothetical orange corp. You'll notice the break-even is actually $130.41. That's because if you subtract the collected premium from the strike price, your actual break-even price lands at $130.41, thanks to the premium collected. This, for us, could be a safer trade with an attractive premium. We want this in our portfolio. So what would we do next? We'd hypothetically select this option to sell by clicking on a virtual plus icon, similar to platforms like Robinhood. This tells our trading platform we want to sell this put option, and our position will be shown as a short put. To proceed, we would just hit continue and enter the number of contracts we desire. Let's say we want three contracts. Why? We have a considerable sum at hand and want to execute three contracts. So we enter three and then put in the bid price, which in our case is $2.08. The ask price, on the other hand, would be $2.11 as we're selling this option. In our hypothetical scenario, we go for a bid price of $2.10. Upon reviewing the trade, we see that it uses up $36,000 of our capital. So just like that, we've collected $636 from our first trade. But we shouldn't forget about smaller accounts. It's just as important for them to benefit from selling puts. So let's delve into how to do that. Imagine we're discussing selling put options, even for small accounts. Take an example of a virtual position. Let's call it ECO. Let's assume we have a large ECO position in our portfolio, over a million dollars. The appeal of ECO lies in its outstanding options. Even with a small account of a few thousand dollars, you could still sell put options on ECO. There's a workaround that lets you sell puts on ECO without needing to have all the collateral or capital. So let's assume we're trading ECO options, and we'll show you this loophole. One key advantage of ECO is the liquid option. You might be wondering what liquid options there are. We'd explain that and talk about favorable expiration points for ECO, as well as how to close this position. It's crucial because many people don't close their positions correctly, which is a common mistake among beginner option traders. That's all for today, folks on Legend Finance. Remember, starting out with a small portfolio is a journey of learning, growing, and embracing both triumphs and trials. Picture transforming a humble $7,000 into a hefty $17,000 through thoughtful research, patience, and calculated risk-taking. And remember, every expert started as a beginner, just like you. As you embark on this exciting journey, keep absorbing new knowledge, stay open to experiments, and continue to believe in your unique path. Trading may be as demanding as it is rewarding, but you've got what it takes to succeed.
If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to Legend Finance for more financial insights and guidance. Stay tuned for our next video. Until then, stay legendary.